Homecoming Week 2023 continues. The parade was last weekend. Tomorrow night, it's the Varsity Lake Orion Dragons taking on the Farmington Falcons. Tonight, we have a tradition continuing. The Powder Puff Game. The seniors, a class of 2024, taking on the juniors, the class of 2025. Good evening, everyone. I'm Doug Corliss, along with the varsity defensive linemen of the Dragons, Tyler Ratliff. And Tyler, you can say all you want. I mean, this is one school, one student body, but for these two classes, this is serious tonight. Oh, it's a very serious matchup. These girls right here, they get to play one game a year. And for some of these girls, this is the last football game they're ever going to play in their entire lives. And this group right here that's seniors, the class of 2024, it took a loss last year to the class of 2023. And every year when it's your senior year and as a dragon, as a girl, it, you have to come out on top and win the Potter Puff game. And a few years in the past, we've seen the juniors come close, but it's been a very long time since we've seen the junior class step up and take a win from the seniors. And I mean, both classes have some players, just to mention like uh, the seniors have very, very explosive running backs with Ali Fouts and Aaron Regalia, and then an elite pass rusher with Gabby Dimio. And then the juniors have a, an elite quarterback as well with Sidney Goodman, and then Mackenzie Tabish at running back. So I think this will be a very even matchup. It's just a matter of who wants it more and who's gonna dig deep and play harder. Traditionally, it's always been the seniors, but hey, it's football. Anything oh, yeah. can happen. Anything can happen. Stay with us. Pre-game was underwritten by Malash's Palace, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. The Malash family has been serving Lake Orion's automotive needs since the 1950s. Give them a call at 248-393-2222 or stop by at 3800 South Lapeer Road in Lake Orion. He cut me off. No, oh, okay. This game is also being aired on Orion Neighborhood Television and streamed worldwide on the NFHS streaming service. Our officials tonight, the referee is Mark Castle, Don Bayback is the umpire, Tim Nepchuk is the head linesman, and Rob Zenmania is the line judge, four main crew tonight. At this time, we'll pause and we will pause for the Star Spangled Banner. I do. Uh, for the 2024 senior class head coach tonight is gym teacher Derek Delzer. And for the junior class, class of 2025, we have assistant principal Anthony Paul Mary. All right, our pregame sponsor, our first quarter sponsor is underwritten by Jets Pizza. Jets Pizza with two convenient locations in the Orion area. 
proud supporter of ONTV since 2009. For more information, visit JetsPizza.com. The juniors won the toss and will receive. They will defend the goal to the south. And kicking off for the seniors, I cannot see a uniform number. It ends in a zero, though. I believe it's, it's number 12 for the seniors kicking the ball. Alex Fouts will kick off. Junior kick returner sets up about the 23 yard line. Referee blows his whistle. And we're underway, line drive kick. Down to about the three, it's still a live ball. Picks up, tries coming along the left side and is flagged down. Number eight, Macy Freeman on the return. And yeah, and the juniors there, when they were flying, I meant the seniors, correction, were like a swarm of bees going down the field there on that kickoff. And they were getting to the ball and playing as a team there. And that was a really good job by the kickoff team for the seniors. It'll be first and 10. They've got it marked at the 13 yard line. This series has had some really wild moments over the years. Oh, absolutely. In this game, it, it can get, it can go two ways. Like you, you see more intense games year by year. It kind of depends on what each class is like, but I think this game right here tonight, you have two very unique classes going at it, and it's going to be a great game. Ball's marked on the 12th, first and 10. Juniors break the huddle, wides either side. Two backs in the backfield. Carried by the quarterback. That is, as soon as she turns around. It looks like she's brought down by number. Number, number 12, Maddie Light is the quarterback for the juniors. I'm sorry, Tyler. It looks like she was brought down by number 53, Ella Hardy, for the seniors, defensive tackle. And the Dragons, looks like the defense is going to run in a... They got four on the line, and they got three in the back with the linebackers to start off. Twins to the right. Two backs alongside Maddie Light. Going around the right side, trying to double back, but flag down is number 101, Sammy Cleland. And she's brought down by Ryan Palachek for the seniors. She had a little bit of room, and it, it jammed up a, with the backs coming yeah. up, and she tried to reverse her field and just couldn't get away. Yes. It's going to be a loss of two. It's going to be third down and 12. Call it 11 from the 11-yard line. Two wides. Now motion this side. Handoff taken up the middle and flagged down at the 10. Was no. number 60, they called it, who is Julia Kolick. And she was brought down by number 102, Nazaria Lardell. It is always fun trying to have. Uh, Numbers that are three digits. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, you can tell right off the get go from this one, the seniors, I mean, they're bringing the heat and okay. they're really fired up for this game. Punt, wobbly punt, taken, picked up, and down is number 40, was that 45? Abby Bartos, 
I could not see the other number. That was Tanoa Williams we heard from the PA system. So that's what we'll go with. Now the, the senior Dragons will be going in starting on the 32 yard line. Great field position. Juniors in a 4-4-3 defense. Skyler Oswald is the quarterback. Full house backfield. Handoff around the right side to number 10, Alex Fouts. And we, we had talked about Ali Fouts coming into this game. You see it right there. That's some tremendous speed as she gets outside and trying to make a run for it. She did. She turned the corner and turned the Jets on, no question. Let's look at it again. Right there, She's she's got a full head of steam and just steps out of bounds about the, they've got it marked at the 15, where it's first and 10. Full house backfield for the seniors. Oh my goodness, touchdown seniors. Allie Fouts. Allie Fouts from 15 yards out and she was hardly touched. As she turned the Jets on as she got vertical there on that run. That was, that was really impressive. So the seniors jump out to an early six to nothing lead. And we'll see what they're going to do for the point after. Number 12, Daphne Gibbald will hold. Balls down. And the kick is good. 10.59 to go here in the first. The seniors jump out to a seven to nothing lead. Yes. No, oh, I'm sorry. The scoreboard read for the or scoreboard for the first half is underwritten by Michigan United Credit Union. The full service financial institution serves everyone who resides, works, worships, or attends school in Michigan. Give them a call at 248-814-4000 or visit their website at michiganunitedcu.org for more information. Sorry, Tyler. No, it's all, you're all good. Uh, Kickoff will go off here momentarily, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, here she goes. She cuts it inside, and look at that. No one touched her. Yeah, she is. she's definitely the key factor in the offense tonight for the seniors, and the, the senior Lady Dragons with some early momentum here as Number, th Fouts. number 32, Chloe Andrews, is looking for her shoelaces back about the 10-yard line. Ball is spotted. High short kick. Taken at the, about the 18. Coming forward, got a line of blockers. Cuts it outside. And stopped about the 30 yard line. Was. Number 64. Morgan Lenny. And she was brought down by Abby Bartos for the seniors. So the juniors take off, take over first and 10 at the 30, just under 10.30 to play here in the first. Seniors out to an early lead. Wonder here on this uh, 
second drive for the juniors if we'll see any passing concepts come from them. It's, it's kind of a hard thing to do. You don't see a lot of passing in this game. Not that there hasn't been. Twins to the right. Cutting outside, number 24, Mackenzie Tavish for a gain of about eight. We had uh, talked about her before the game too. Mackenzie Tavish says she gets outside here on this outside play here for the juniors as she cuts it back in there, trying to get upfield, showing some speed as the juniors get a nice little five yard gain there. She's gotta take, uh, take better care of that football. Yes. She's got that thing out there like a loaf of bread. So second down and two. Twins right this time, or twins left this time. Trying to cut it outside, cutting up field. Got a first down and more down the sideline. 30, 20, cuts it inside. Touchdown juniors. Mackenzie Tavish. From 62 yards away. She took that ball to the house there on that one. That was some impressive speed there, as we saw from Mackenzie Tavish. As we said, she's going to be a great factor in tonight's game, and boy, did she show it on that play as she cut it up on the left side of the field and just took that ball straight to the house. So the juniors answer a score with a score, and they're an extra point away from tying this one up. And that, that touchdown right there, that's a statement from the juniors as showing they're not intimidated by being the junior class and the previous history of what's happened to junior teams here in the past at Lake Orion Potter Puff. And they also showed they've got some speed on their yes. side also. So number 101, who I have in my program, is Sammy Clellan will attempt the extra point. And the point is good, 8.57 to go here in the first, and we're tied. Now, the junior class forcing the 2024s to answer the call here as it's it's seven to seven here in quarter number one. Watch it, let's watch the speed as she gets around the edge. Right here, she turns the corner, got a, enough of a block to delay her. And right here, she cuts it inside and takes it the rest of the way. Yeah, outside, outside contain on defense is so key. If you want to stop the run, you got to be able to contain the ball carrier and keep them inside. Yeah. And I know we've heard Coach Fritching say it time and time again, Perimeter blocking. You gotta have perimeter blocking. Your linebackers have to contain and your wide receivers have to block. High short kick. Bouncing around, still on the ground, but they're gonna call her down at the 35 yard line, nobody really got a handle on that kickoff. Yeah, dropping kicks is so key because if you're close to any defender on that field and you touch the ball or drop the, the kick, that ball can get recovered and that stuff right there, it's game changers. It's a live ball. So first and 10 for the seniors from their own 35 with 8.25 to go here in the first. Seniors split four wide, double wide, double slot look, single back in the backfield. Toss back. Trying to cut it outside is number 55, Brady Hogan. She got 10, and it's going to be a first down. She got what she had to get. 
your senior first down. So first and ten, handoff again. Aaron Regalia around the outside, first down and more. Stopped at the junior's 42-yard line, and again, it's that chunk yardage. Yes, and the juniors now ha are going to have some trouble with this because the seniors have shown they have two threats now with Aaron Regalia and Fouts yep. in the backfield. You don't know what you're going to get. They got the perfect one-two punch there in the backfield, which is perfect for this game. And we just talked about perimeter blocking. You saw it from the senior wide receivers. Absolutely. That was tremendous blocking. So first and ten. Twins right, single wide left. Regalia again reverses the field, trying to get outside, cuts a block inside the 20 and flagged down at the 20 yard line. She started out, saw nothing to the left, had the wherewithal to reverse her field and come back and got a first down on it. And absolutely, and you can see the agility here too from right Megalia as she sees the open hole and she uses her speed to get back outside and cut through those defenders and weave through and read the blocks. And that's so key to being a great football player and being a great running back. And who did she pick up a block from? Her quarterback. We have a moment while we have an equipment adjustment. First and 10 from the 21. Toss back, cutting out inside. Still not flagged down, touchdown seniors. Allie Fouts. Allie Second. Fouts zigzagged her way through it and was able to avoid contact all the way in. That, that cutback she made right there, that was like a old-fashioned Barry Sanders cutback move she had right there. I mean, she read the defense there perfectly as she fakes going left, plants her foot in the turf, and then cuts back to the right and taking it to the house for the Dragons. And if you can't remember Billy or Barry Sanders, it was a Billy Roberson cutback. <laughs> so the seniors looking to add an extra point and go up by a touchdown. Junior's a little late getting their coverage team out. Ball is down. Kick is up, and the kick is good. 5.30 to go here in the first, the seniors. If both these teams keep playing like they are, this is gonna be a very exciting play right here. As we see the running back fouls here for the seniors, as she's going outside and sees there's no room, as she cuts it back inside, as she weaves through the defense and gets the touchdown here for the senior Dragons. And she was able to cut back inside with three white shirts around her, yes. and they all missed her. And that shows the speed there too. Junior's looking to answer here. Too deep for the juniors. High short kick. That's a live ball. Pick it up. And she is still on the move and taken down at the 22. Oh, and we're going to have a penalty against the seniors for a little extracurricular. Yeah, it looks like done by number 41, Lataya Williams. The whistle had blown and it was totally unnecessary. So 
So they'll march off 15 more. The ball will be spotted on the 38 yard line, first and 10 for the juniors. I'm curious to see what the juniors game plan here is. Will they continue to pound the ball with Tavish or will they mix up the game plan and do something else? Two wide outs, full house backfield. Hand off, off the left side and flagged down at the 45 was number 79, Vanessa Ross. But that's not who it was because that's not what the PA people The PA people have a different roster than we have. So we're just going to, as the saying goes, call them as we see them. <laughs> And our apologies to any mothers for not getting your daughter's name right. So it'll be second down and 15. Ball now spotted on the 35. And we're under 3.30 to play here in the first. On the carry, I hope I've got the name right, was Isabel Wat Watlinski. And she was brought down by Grace Luby for the seniors. And that was just tremendous pass rush, too, there from the seniors. I mean, they forced the ball outside of the linebackers, and then Grace Luby was in the back for the Dragons as the linebacker, and she just came in, filled it perfectly, and made a play. Yeah, and Wodlinski tried to take it off the left side. Nothing was there, and she did have the wherewithal to try to cut it back around to the right, but there was just too much pursuit. So second down and 13. Off the left side and flagged down after about an eight yard gain. And she's brought down by Keza Shelton for the seniors. And now it'll be third down as the juniors are looking to score. I'll give you a lot of credit. You did that without even looking at a roster. So it's third down and eight from the 40. As we close in on a minute and a half left in the first. Twins left. First down and more. They're saying they flagged her down at the 46 and a half. So it's going to be third down and two. And that was Watlinski on the carry. You know, Izzy Watlinski is a She's a really good athlete too. She's a member of the varsity girls basketball team. Uh, this will be her uh, second year now on the team and she's a tremendous athlete. So you can see why the juniors are trying to get the ball in her hands here in the first quarter. And you look at some of these, these athletes and the, the different sports that they play. You know, and I'm sure athletic director Chris Bell will allude to this, that the future for Lake Orion Athletics is really bright. Oh, it's very bright. So fourth down and one, they're calling it. Twins each side. First down and more. Cuts it inside, still running. And they've got her flagged down about the 37 yard line. Not, um, it was a, a high snap over the quarterback taken by one of the backs and cut it outside. It was uh, Maddie Light. Yeah, Maddie Light. Varsity. Uh, girl softball member. 
So we've played one. The senior class leads the junior seven to nothing. Hey, tonight's game is a copyrighted presentation of Lake Orion High School's broadcasting program and Orion Neighborhood Television. Last in the last few years, the LOHS broadcast program was awarded the title of best overall program in the country, and they have yet to give it up. We brought you over 80 live sporting events, and we plan to match that again this year. Plus, you can watch our award-winning daily live newscast, LOAM. Tune in at www.dragonbroadcasting.org. And our second quarter is underwritten by Detroit Wing Company. Established in January of 2023, Detroit Wing Company in Oxford is located on the northeast corner of Drainer and Lapeer. Offers over 20 signature sauces for their classic wings, boldness wings, and hand-battered chicken tenders. With guest favorites including honey barbecue, garlic parmesan, classic buffalo, honey chipotle, whiskey barbecue, and sweet heat. The menu also includes signature crispy chicken sandwiches and more. For more information about Detroit Wing Company, visit their website, DetroitWingCompany.com. And to bring you the second quarter, here's Tyler Ratliff. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now, juniors will come out here to start the second quarter here with the ball. We got two wide receivers, two backs. And now looking to run outside, but seniors come in and make a stop. And uh, that was number 113. That's on the other page. Haley, Haley Williams there on the stop there for the Dragons as uh, moving the down marker back five yards here as the juniors have 15 yards now to get the first down. Going to make it a little bit more difficult on them here. Yeah, get that, that tackle for a loss. That defensive front had great penetration that time. All four of them were in around the ball oh, carrier. Absolutely. And half the time, on most successful plays, it depends on the line, on who wins the line of scrimmage. And now there's a fumble Ball's there. on the ground. Let's see what they call. Looks like the juniors will retain possession. It was recovered there by number 81, Avery Yarnell, for the Dragons. But the referee says it's junior ball, as it'll be third down here. Yeah, third and 17, if you haven't got a passing attack, you know, this is going to be a hard thing to go to, to handle with 17 yards to go. Oh, it's going to be very difficult. Now, Junior's going uh, two receivers to the right and then two backs in the backfield. Hiking, there's a fumble and, and she is sacked by number 77, what is sacked by uh, Lexi Strochin. Good luck for that. <laughs> for the seniors, and that is the first sack of the night. And the seniors get that one. Yeah, now you reach into your playbook and try to come up with your fourth down and 24 play. Looks like they're going to punt the ball here. Very wise choice. But yes, very wise choice because you don't want to give this senior team good field nice possession. Nice kick. And that was a very good punt as Regalia looking to get it, but the ball bounces back to the end zone for touchback, and then... Ball not, get moved up to the 20. Not bad. She had, that was a very, very good kick. Little spiral on it, hit and took a senior's bounce into the end zone. 
And both these teams have, they have soccer players on their team, so that's very useful when it comes to needing kickers and punters on your team. Always is. Now the seniors will begin their next drive here on the 20-yard line. And for the juniors, right now you've got one thing. Get the ball back. Yes, absolutely. You don't, you don't want to give this senior offense the ball for too much time here. Three wide receivers. Regalia now going to take it outside. And she's going wide, going to the house as she breaks free to the 40, to the 30, 20, 10. Touchdown, Senior Dragons, Aaron Regalia. That was a very interesting way that play developed with the toss back. And she was standing back there with nobody around her. And once she took off, nobody could catch her. She was gone. And she was moving really fast there. And that, that's, that's impressive speed here. Again, uh, the senior showing the explosiveness out of the backfield there. And now that will take the score up 20-7 to seven as the dr senior Dragons try to get the extra point here. As Regalia will be kicking the extra point for the Dragons. She does it all. I'm surprised she doesn't drive the team bus. <laughs> And that kick is good. And that will move the score to 7-21 as the Junior Dragons will get the ball back here and try to get some momentum and try to keep the score close. Because we initially saw the Senior Dragons come out, but, I mean, this play right here is right here, she stand, looks like she was going to throw it. And right here she turns the Jets on. I mean, she made a great decision there, too, to be able to see that gap there on the left side of the field and just use her speed and get outside and take it. What was that, 60 yards for a touchdown about? Yeah. That's, that's a huge and, momentum changer. And she did something really subtle as she cut. Someone was reaching for her flag, and she just took her offhand and just swatted her arm away. Kickoff here as the juniors get it. Because they're running it right up the middle. She's got some room as she goes up the middle, but she is taken oh. down at the 50 about. 48, they're going to call her down. By Allie Fouts. And now the juniors will begin their next offensive drive from the 48. She's brought down to 48. And now... Um, we saw some tremendous pursuit and uh, pass rush here last drive from the Dragons defense, and I'm very curious if they will continue this for the rest of the night because that was very impressive. And now also if the junior offense will respond from that last touchdown from the seniors. Yeah, their last possession, they, they went backwards. So they've got to get the ship righted, get some positive yardage, and answer a score with a score. Junior saying, who is it? Juniors are going to call time. And while we have a timeout, we will also say this second quarter is underwritten by Builders Custom Flooring. It's a family-owned and operated flooring business located conveniently in downtown Lake Orion. Their showroom floor features a selection of hardwood flooring, carpet, luxury vinyl, and a wide variety of tile and backsplash. For more information about Builders Custom Flooring, visit their website at builderscustomflooring.com or call them at 248-814-9. Six six three. Is the timeout we end in here momentarily. Now this next drive will begin as the huddle breaks. Looks like the juniors will be going with two backs in the backfield again, two wide receivers wide. 
now they go. It's jet sweep to the outside as the junior's going to use their speed to get to the outside. See if she can break, and she does. Oh, boy. And that there is a touchdown for the class of 2025. Touchdown, juniors. And that is... M Melendez on the touchdown because it certainly, certainly didn't do any good off off our roster. <laughs> and that, that was that was a huge answer there from the junior showing that we're, they're not going to go away easy here and the, the seniors aren't going to just walk into this thing and take the victory easily. And that was that, that was a tremendous touchdown there from the juniors as we'll be getting a replay of that here momentarily. But so. they did just what they had to do. They answered a score with a score. In football, it's a game of momentum, and I would say that both teams right now, maybe the seniors a little bit more, have just very good momentum. Nobody is mentally fatigued, as we can see. They're both scoring touchdowns, and both teams are just continuing to play hard. And this senior class, you know, they, they've been here and done that. They did this last year. The field goal is good for the juniors. So it's now back to a one-score game. Now here's there that replay here as we see the running back. She gets outside and just uses her speed as she gets past multiple defenders. I mean, that just shows right there you got to have outside contain. As we see, the juniors are running a lot of jet sweeps and a lot of zones. Yep. When they run that, outside contain is so key when it comes to your outside linebackers and defensive ends to work together to keep that ball inside. Because when we've seen the juniors being able to do that, all the other guys on the team come in and just – they, they swarm to the ball and they make plays. And that's why outside contain and pursuit is so key when it comes to the defensive side of the ball. And now we'll have a kickoff here. And Regalia back to receive for the Dragons. Nice short kick. That's a live ball. As it's dropped and Regalia gets it. She takes it out right, cuts back to her left, moves, but she is brought down by she, number yeah. 87 for the juniors. Tegan Walter. A tremendous tackle, and those, those open oh. field tackles aren't easy, too. Yeah, she held her position. She didn't buy into any fakes or She held her position, let her get back deep in the backfield, and then flagged her down. Yeah, and... And she broke down perfectly, set her feet, and made the tackle. And that's perfect technique there. And now the juniors have one task, and that's to stop this drive. Get the ball back. Now, looks like the Dragons, the senior Dragons will go trips. Three receivers to the right, single back in the backfield. Oswald is quarterback. Hands it off to. Oh, she, she keeps kept it. it. She keeps it. As she tries running, as she's brought down at about the 40 by the juniors, yeah. number 73. And she lowered her. She lowered her shoulder oh, yeah, into she, contact. That, Someone's got to tell her she doesn't have pads on. Oh yeah, these girls, the, all of them, they, they know what they're in for. They're when it oh, comes yeah. to the game of football. All these girls are tough, and they both want the victory. And they're, everyone's running hard and playing hard in both teams. And that's that's what you want to see as a coach on a, on your team to see your players playing hard for each other. Oswald will come out, and we have a new quarterback, but Fouts is in the backfield. As she hands the ball to Fouts, she takes it outside. There's nobody there. And Fouts takes it to the field. 20-10, see you later, touchdown, seniors. Boy, she turned the corner, and nobody was going to catch her. That's, that's some tremendous speed right there. That's... You can tech, you can coach technique, you can coach route running, you cannot coach speed. That's one of the f toughness, speed, it, those two things are just, they're very hard to teach. And she, Allie Fouts is showing off her speed tonight 
along with Aaron Regalia for the Senior Dragons as well. And they're just, those two are major playmakers tonight for the seniors as they move the score to 27 to 14. And Regalia now looking to get the extra point here for the Senior Dragons. And the field goal is good. Somewhere in this stadium, Will Hoffman is looking at and saying, boy, I wish I had that much time. <laughs> and you can just see, I mean, like you said there, there was nobody there. Look at, look at the strides, the long strides. And she's just, she's moving through those defenders so fluently too. And you have to look at this too. I mean, they've only really been practicing football for two weeks and that's to right. be able to develop reads and stuff like that in two weeks, that's really impressive as Ali Fouts reads the defenders and just takes an absolute run. Like that was, that was very impressive. She just took that to the house for the seniors. Now score 28-14, Dragon's gonna kick the ball off. Senior Dragon's gonna kick the ball off momentarily. Fouts kicks it. Hey, nice catch. As these juniors catch it, looking to make a move up the middle. Yep, and she's like brought them. down at about the 35 by number 15 for the seniors, Allie Jones. Allie Jones, member of the girls' varsity basketball team as well. <laughs> at least we hope it was her. So looking forward to tomorrow night. Are you ready? Oh, I'm, I, we're ready to go as a team. I mean, we are, I mean, uh, we're seven and oh. The one thing that's been different about our team than a lot of other teams is, I mean, we have a very close bond with each other. We all have one goal and that's obviously to win a state championship. And we, we just want to keep moving forward and keep trying our best and working hard every single day. And it's homecoming week. It, it just never gets any better. And it's, it's senior night too, so. Now, it's not only a special night for myself, but every other one of the members for the okay, class of Okay, look at this lineup. You have, what, six six wides to the left? This is an interesting formation here for the juniors as quarterback breaks right, but the Dragons, number 66, brings down number 81, Maddie Slocum for the juniors, but... Elena Narlock. And that was, that was really good because, I mean, I guarantee the senior defense wasn't expecting that type of formation, no. right? I mean, no. be able to defend it, that's, that's impressive. Because when you see seven receivers, or your, your whole offensive line set to the left, nobody, you know, everyone, the natural expectation is you're going to run it left. Yes. And, and they, she just broke it off did. to the right, but got caught for a yard loss. But I will give them points for ingenuity. Under four minutes to go here in the first half. And now they got two running backs in the backfield. Um, two watt receivers. As now they run a jet to the outside. And she is stopped, I believe. She may have got a yard there, but. Yeah, they're going to give her a couple. As. But again, she lowered her shoulder and took oh, on yeah. contact. And number 80. Number 80 is, I hope, Sophie Shelby. And she, she was running hard there. She lowered her shoulder and get a few yards there for the juniors as the ball is about the 37 yard line. And that is about the thing that happens when you don't have a lot of passing and it's a ground game over on both sides. You know, we've, we've been playing football for about 45 minutes when we're at halftime. Yeah, and I'm just, I mean, for the most part, this senior defense has really um, had pretty good outside contain for the most part, except for obviously those two touchdowns. But we've seen from both teams, if you shut down the outside, that just cleans up the defensive yeah. scheme so much more. And now, well, single receiver, two backs now. 
is now number 80. The try running it. Flagged her down at the 40. And no, they've got her flagged down back at the line of scrimmage. Now that'll be pretty much a yeah. The yeah, senior's going to take a timeout. And that's just that, that's great defense as we see there from the senior ladies. As I mean, that's that's penetration from the defensive line, just the yes. front seven winning it right there. As I said earlier, who, whoever wins the front seven for the most part in the game of football, that's who the play usually goes positive yep. for. So while we have a timeout, I know I have another read here somewhere. And thanks to Orion Neighborhood Television and Dragon Broadcasting, you can watch Lake Orion High School sports live online all year. We've got a full schedule of varsity football, volleyball, and more this fall, like tonight's Powder Puff game, plus concerts and ceremonies. It costs less than $11 per month to watch sporting events, and half of that money goes back to the LOHS program. Be sure to designate Lake Orion High School when you set up your account. Get started at www.dragonbroadcasting.org. Orion Neighborhood Television thanks our student crews for their hard work and dedication to bring Dragon Sports to the world. Now Junior's gonna punt here. Now Regalia back to receive. The ball is it takes a senior lead. bounce. I don't know if it was touched there or not, but I believe uh, it went out of bounds. It goes out at the 41. Yes. Now this senior Offense looking to, to continue their momentum now. I don't think the senior offense has been stopped once, if I'm, cr if I'm correct. Yeah, pretty there. much, yeah. Yeah, they've been just full steam ahead tonight on offense. So, with this being homecoming weekend, are you going to the homecoming dance? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. It's a, it, it's a great time of year. The colors are changing. This is one of the best venues in Oakland County, if not the state. Now Regalia will get the handoff as she tries to run back the opposite way, looking to get some room as she oh. runs by the defender as she got about a little more than 10 yards, if I'm not, if I'm correct. And two senior girls were going to close in on her, and she gave a little shoulder juke, and they ran into each other. No. It will be a first down at the junior 49-yard line. And no. the seniors are going to take a timeout. And while we have a timeout, we'll catch up on reads. Larry Buss and the crew at Jets Pizza, located at 1091 South Lapeer Road, have been a proud supporter of Orion Neighborhood Television and Dragon Athletics since 2009. Jets supplies catering for cast and crew. Thank you, Larry, for your continued support. Give them a call and order dinner tonight, 248-814-7559. As this, uh, as the as after that great run there by the seniors, what are something that you see that the junior defense really needs to improve on here? Defense, uh, the the juniors' defense has to track the ball carrier better. Absolutely, they're letting yeah. the ball carrier get away, and it's it's their linebackers that have to do the side to side pursuit. They're getting caught up maybe on a motion to the right and coming back left. Now Fouts getting the ball. And she cuts it totally back to the opposite end of the field using her speed, possibly long run, but as she goes down. she And she jammed up three junior linebackers. She totally reversed that play as she saw. Yeah. That, that's just... When That's, she came around the left. As we see it here, Fouts goes right, around on the left, and three defenders. Right there, you just, got three defenders. 
That's just unbelievable vision there as she now, able to see that she, gap. And she did, did have a great block in there from Liza Bruner that jammed up yeah. some of those three blockers, enabling her to return to reverse her field and get around the, the right side. Yes, a, a credit to every single person there on the senior offense that was blocking. Because th these big runs don't happen without the offensive line and the wide receivers making blocks. Right. Now, Dragon's going to hike it as they give it back to Fouts on the sweep as she's almost brought down, is yeah. she? Yeah, they've got her flag down. That's about a... At the 19. So about six-yard gain. Yeah. Second down here for the seniors. We can see speed on both squads. But the junior's pursuit can't keep up with the senior's yes, speed. Yes, absolutely. Their skill it's, it's a defensive game, 100%. Because, I mean, you have both talent on both sides on offense, and it's just a matter of who plays better on defense. We have a timeout taken by the juniors with a minute six left to go. Fast moving first half. And be sure to tune into replays of your favorite games right here on Orion Neighborhood Television. Tune in Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 7 p.m. and Saturdays at 1 p.m. for the most current games in our lineup. Games are also replayed throughout the week, so check our program guide on our webpage at Orion, ontv.org, for replay times that best fit your viewing schedule. Also, visit our YouTube link for games on demand, www.orionontv.org. Now 10 seconds left to go as Oswald hikes it for the Dragons, gives it to Fouts as she goes outside, trying to use her speed as she gets to the end zone. And that is a touchdown, seniors. Allie Fouts again answers the bell. Touchdown, seniors. And again, credit the seniors receivers for blocking for that was once once that reverse took place they stayed and just made a wall oh absolutely that was there that hole she ran through was big enough that a car could drive through it she went right through it see if joey's gonna pull the replay up on this one we showed 3.2 seconds to go here in the first half Now Orgalia. No. Junior's trying to create a little bit of a distraction here for Regalia kicking the extra point. But the field goal yeah, she's a pro. is good as I mean Regalia is a member of the varsity girls soccer team ever since she was a freshman, so she knows what it does. Yeah. And this okay. right here is the There we replay. go. Here she comes around the side. And she just slips through that little hole and has the speed to get to outrun the coverage. That's just that's a difference maker here when you have a running back in the rear backfield that has the speed yeah. and agility to be able to slip through those little holes when they have to. Because when, when you can do that, that creates so much more opportunities for your offense. Three seconds on the clock. And now kick is dropped, but recovered by the juniors as they're looking to make a run. Oh, she got flagged down at the 30. As the half expires. Score 35-14, seniors in the lead. And that is the end of the first half here. And you are watching exclusive coverage of the Powder Puff game for 2023 here on Orion Neighborhood Television and the NFHS streaming service. We'll be right back.
And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, here on ONTV's Game of the Week Thursday night as we have the Lake Orion High School homecoming powder puff game. The seniors class of 2024 taking on the junior class of 2025. We have a score right now after the first half, 35-14. Both teams battling it out here as the second half will be starting up here momentarily. Um, I'm Tyler Ratliff, and Doug, I just want to ask you real quick going into this second half, what are some things that you are seeing that both teams are doing really well, but also some improvements that both teams need to be making? Well, since nobody's throwing the ball, they're running the ball really well. And I think that the, the blocking at the point of attack for both teams has been really good because they... The, the backs have been able to get outside on both teams, and once they get outside, they're getting past that second level, and then they're using speed. And like we said, you can coach all kinds of things, but you can't coach speed. So now the senior's gonna get it back to start the third quarter. And I was just advised by athletic director Chris Bell that we are going to have a running clock this second half. And, and there she goes again. Allie Fouts just used her speed, turned on the jet engines, and she gets another touchdown for the seniors. That was... And, and that was almost too easy because you know, they dropped the kick, picked it up, and Ali Fouts just turned the corner and turned on the Jets. Yeah, and we, we, I just see, we see some fatigue there for me. I saw there from the juniors as they kicked. I mean, that was just a wide open gap yeah. there. And, I mean, when you have a person with that amount of speed, she's going to take it to the house every single time if you give her that opportunity. And I and next year for the 2024 Powder Puff game, this squad of juniors this year are going to dominate the way the seniors are doing this year. Oh, absolutely. I mean, last year, this senior squad, they got dominated as juniors by the class of 2023. Right. And that's just the way it's it just, goes. It's just a matter of experience. And, I mean, yeah, like you said, after this point after, we will get into our halftime reads, the ones we should have done, and we will. Field goal's good. So with the score 42 to 14, we will remind you that halftime was underwritten by Malasha's Palace Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram located at 3800 South Lapeer Road in Lake Orion. Malasha's Palace has been serving Lake Orion's automotive needs since the 1950s. Give them a call at 248 393 2222 or stop by at 3800 South Lapeer Road in Lake Orion and Detroit Wing Company. Established in January of 2023, Detroit Wing Company in Oxford is located on the northeast corner of Drainer and Lapeer. 20 signature sauces for their classic wings, boneless wings, and chicken tenders. For more information about Detroit Wing Company, visit their website at DetroitWing.com. Kickoff goes out of bounds. And we have a junior girl down. It looks like, I can't see the number there. It looks like number 120, which amazingly is not on my roster. So the trainers and the coaching staffs come out to take a look at her, and while they are attending to her, we'll catch up on reads. The scoreboard for the second half is underwritten by Builders Custom Flooring. 
Builders Custom Flooring is a family-owned and operated flooring business located conveniently in downtown Lake Orion. Their showroom floor features a selection of hardwood flooring, carpet, luxury vinyl, and a wide variety of tile and backsplash. For more information about Builders Custom Flooring, visit their website at builderscustomflooring.com. And I know I have another page of reads. No, I've done them all. Joey, we got them all in this week. So the medical staff, and usually the officials, will tell the medical staff, the trainers, you take as much time as you need. That's number 121 who unfortunately is not on my roster of the junior class. First and 10 from the 35 yard line. Juniors have the ball. Now, uh, the senior defense going to continue the pressure. As I mean, we've seen early, Mackenzie Tavish, the running back, and uh, Maddie Light as the quarterback. I mean, they does some damage on the, showing their speed. And I, they, I mean, there's still a lot of time left in this game. I mean, there's still time for a comeback. And I, we, I'm very curious to see if the juniors can pull it together here and make a comeback here in the second half. Try to set that senior defensive front. Gabby DeMio is at right defensive end, and I'll get some more after this play. It looks like she was brought down there at a I, foul. Yeah. McKenny, uh, McKenzie Tavish on the carry. And she, she was running hard there on that run. Looks yeah. like she ran into a few people there. Sometimes you see a hole and you think, hey, I can get through there. If you're playing tackle football, maybe you can, but you've got people grabbing it at ribbons hanging off your waist. Yeah, it's... And, it's it's kind of hard to get through tight quarters. Yeah, and also, I mean, it's a lot harder to make those hard runs in tackle because you got pads and stuff. Yep. This, I mean, there's no pads at all. You're running into people with no pads on and just going head to head. We have a stoppage in play. And you can see the and the clock's still running, so they're just gonna. Something to do with a, I think with a jersey because they were, the referee was wiping his chest, coming around left end, turning it on, and she's out of bounds at the 38, 39 yard line. That's number 80 for the juniors? Yeah, number. 80, who I'm still trying to find here. Sophie Shelley on the carry. Gets a first down. It'll be first and 10 from the 39. 840 to go. Now this is that was really key there for the juniors because once you get past the 50, you start moving closer to getting in that red zone. And with a running clock, you can't take a lot of time in the huddle. You've got to have a little sense of urgency. Absolutely. That's and they've taken factor. a long time in mm -hmm. the huddle. About eight minutes to go here in the third quarter. Twins left, single wide right. Right. 
reversing her field. Trying to get a little block in the back, but it got away, got away from it and flagged down near the 15. Mackenzie Tavish on the on the play. Yeah, Mackenzie Tavish, that was that was a really good run there. She just uses her speed, reads her blocks, gets to the outside, and makes a play. And at the end of the day, that's what it is on who has more speed, who makes more blocks, and then who can tackle. And right there, the junior offense won that play. Who's gonna who's going to make the play? So first and ten from the fifteen. Wide out to either side, receiver set up on a wing right. Pass over the middle, intercepted by the seniors. And that is. That's the first pass we've seen thrown tonight, and it was picked off by the seniors. It'll be marked down about the three yard line, and the seniors will have it first and ten. And then number 109, Gabby Bucky, the intended target for the juniors. It wasn't a bad thrown ball, but she just threw it into a crowd. Yeah, when, when you got defenders swarming a, a, a pass there, it's just, you don't want to throw it when there's that many defenders there in that certain area. And it was the old sign, go up and get it, and she did. Yes, absolutely. It was aggressive and went up and got the ball. So the seniors take over first and 10 from their own three with now, under six minutes to play here in the third. Now, this close in your own end zone, this is safety territory for the defense. It is. This is where the defense is licking their chops. You got a four-man front against a five, six-man, six-person front. Coming around the right side. Regalia on the carry. Yeah. And she looks like she was brought down by a... Chased out of bounds by number 20, Ashley Ramos. And there is the thing where you use the sideline as an extra defender. If you can't get her out, get her out of, of bounds. Mm -hmm. And uh, our coach, Coach Bell, the head football coach at Lake Orange, has said the reason for a team that wins football games, most games, is the team that blocks better and the team that tackles better. No question. And right now, I would say the reason why this team right here, the seniors is, are winning, is because they're blocking better and they're tackling better. Yeah, look at that offensive line. There's, what, seven people on the offensive line. And then the runners are just outrunning everybody. And Regalia on the carry. She's Regalia, and she kind of got unceremoniously pushed down at the end of the run. Just using her speed, getting to the outside, and blazing past defenders as she gets a little push to the ground. Which I know that didn't feel good. Yeah, that yeah, that. That may have all that rubber in that to make it, to cushion it, but you know what? When you land on it with no protection, it hurts. Oh yeah, there's <laughs> nothing worse than the good old turf burn. Yeah. So trips to the right, single back in the backfield. Toss back to the back. Cutting around the right side, turning the speed on. Cutting it inside. And she's going to take it all the way again. Allie Fouts. Allie Fouts is going to sleep very well tonight because she's run up and down this field all night long. But she's not tired enough to smile. Yeah, I bet you if the varsity running back Billy Roberson is watching this right now, he's a little worried because he's got some competition. Now they... Did they mark her down? They're marking it they back did, yeah. at the 35 yard line. She may have stepped out of bounds. 
So it's still a first down. First and 10. Trips to the left. A back set up on a wing left. Bouts again. Shakes off a blocker. Over the 45, she's got a first down to midfield. And it'll be first down. And that's just... This is very impressive. I mean, I would say for most carries tonight for the senior offense, they're getting five yards or more on every single carry. And that's, yeah. just, that's just effort. I mean, yeah. Moving people on the front and just running hard, that's what happens. And I think in the after the next two minutes elapse, you will see mass changes on both squads as they try to get everyone into the game. Yes. Trips to the left. Nice job corralling the ball in and stopped is Maddie Eckert, now at quarterback for the seniors. Maddie Eckert, member of the varsity softball team at the high school, as her and Skylar Oswald have been the quarterbacks tonight yep. for the seniors. And as always, Orion Neighborhood Television will be covering Lake Orion softball in the 2024 season. Look forward to seeing everyone out in the softball fields this year. First and 10. Again, trips left. Keeper around the right side. Skyler Oswald back in at quarterback, took it around right in, turned on the Jets, and nobody touched her. Yeah, that's that'll be Skyler Oswald's first touchdown of the night, and the, she, the defense that was a very, very good, well-run play there it for was. a QB keeper as she gets it to the outside, and there was no defenders really over there. I mean, the senior. Offense had faked out the junior defense totally there on that QB keeper. So again, for the extra point to make it 49 to 14. Ball is down, kick is up, and the kick is good as the third quarter expires. The score is the seniors 49. The juniors, 14. And then, yeah, you can Let's see. Let's watch this. Fakes the toss, and she just looks like she's moving at a whole nother speed oh, absolutely. than what the defenders are. Yeah, and you can see, too, with Fouts. I mean, Fouts has been a really big contributor for their offense. So when she faked it, the entire defense seemed to move with the fake, and that just created a whole open field for Oswald to be able to keep the ball and just get vertical and get the touchdown for the seniors. So the seniors will kick off as we start the fourth quarter. Seniors ahead by 35. Fouts kicking it as juniors grab it, looking to return it. And she keeps running, and but she's brought yeah, she's down. She's flagged down about the 30, they're going to call it. Number 41 for the seniors. Lataya Williams. Now, so right now, for the seniors, it's don't let them score. Yeah, we, we, the seniors are, they're just, they're showing how explosive that are. 49 points, that's a lot. That's, that's saying something about your offense right there. And their front four has done a good job on neutralizing mm -hmm. 
the offensive line mm -hmm. of the juniors. Yeah, th this junior team is not a bad junior team at all. No. They're playing really well. As the juniors trying to get outside, as they do, got some room as they get up the middle, but they go down to the ground there is number 12 for the juniors. Maddie Light. Yeah, Maddie Light, their quarterback. She's had a busy night tonight also. Oh, I've, yeah, absolutely. Her and many other players on this junior offense have been very explosive, but yet still contained by the senior defense. And a couple plays, they've got the ball into senior territory. Mm -hmm. First down mm -hmm. and it, lots of time to work with. Now, double backs, and then two receivers to the left. It's 81, gets the ball, but she goes down. Yeah, she did. <clears throat> yeah. Looks like the... Someone the, grabbed an ankle as she went through the line, and she's getting up a little gingerly. I believe that's number 81, Maddie Slocum. Yeah. She's, she's got a little hitch in her gas. She's walking it off. She's tough. Mm -hmm. And she gained three. So we have a second and seven as we, as we close in on the 12-minute mark of the fourth quarter. Now, two re one receiver on each side, two backs in the backfield. Light hikes it, keeps it, goes to the outside, trying to make a play, using her speed as she gets free. Oh, she got flagged down about the 27-yard line. But Again. she did. She had a head of speed, uh, head of steam going in through the line. Yeah, the seniors don't stop her right there and make a play. Then Maddie Lay on she's that run, gone. she's taking it for six right no there. No question. And now that'll be first down, though, for the juniors as they move in to the red zone. A number 125 checked in, but my roster only goes to 124. No. Slocum, Light, and Tabish all in the backfield. And, Twint, and two receivers on the right. And now, I believe and she's flagged down at the 25, gain of three. Looks like multiple uh, seniors there yeah. got a hand on the flag. Now second down for the juniors. With about 10 minutes and 30 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. Been an entertaining game tonight. Oh, it has lots of lots of big runs, lots of back and forth. Yeah. Absolutely, mm -hmm. it, it's always fun when you see the offense breaking long runs. Unless you're playing on the defense. Yes, absolutely. Those are. <laughs> no, as they hike, Balls but there's on a the ground. Fumble. Still alive, and they're blowing it dead at the 30. And now, ball will be at about the 30, and it'll be third down. Third and 12. Now, I, I wonder, I know that the juniors earlier, they threw a pick, but will they attempt to try to throw another pass here? Because at this point in the game, they don't really have much to lose. They really don't. You've got third and long. You're in a position you really want to score to just to tighten the score up. Mm -hmm. You got twin receivers. As quarterback keep, she gets outside. Yes, she does. 
cuts it inside. As she goes down. <laughs> I mean, For a flag football game, there are bodies flying all over the place out there. I, I think someone needs to tell the <laughs> senior defense that this is flag football. Yeah, they're marking it down at the 11. It'll be... Yeah, maybe it's at the 10 because the chain crew, yeah, now they're picking up the sticks. I think they thought it was a first and goal. They can get a first down without scoring. And this is the time where you just call plays and you keep pounding the ball as much as you can and eventually you'll get the rock in the end zone. You've got your twins to the left. Run something to the left and use them as your blockers. And the ball was on the ground and picked up again. And they got, they're giving them a loss of five. So that just took your momentum and backed it up five yards. And, uh, shout out to number 53, Ella Hardy on the D line. She has been taking on double teams and all these blocks all night long and just her and the rest of the D-line have just been doing their job and clogging their holes. And when you clog up all the, the B's and the A-gaps, that allows the linebackers to come in and yes. fill the C-gaps and make plays. Height, meant light correction, looking to hike the ball as the quarterback. As she keeps it, trying to get outside. And but she got flagged down a after a, a huge loss. I believe number 73. Yeah. She's going to be marked down back at the 25 yard line. And it's going to be third down in an acre. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, number 73, Ella Hardy, making plays on the defensive line. Now it'll be third and long, possible pass attempt coming from the juniors. Yeah, they're calling it third and 24 from the 25 yard line. Two receivers, one on each side. Boy, it looks like there's a slant pattern open here on the right. But we have not seen a lot of throwing today, except now. Receiver yeah. fell down. She's tripped up there. Yeah, and there's a flag out. Possible pass interference call incoming yep. here. Yes, pass interference on the defense. So that's going to give them an automatic first down. Yeah, I know the rule no, for- No, it isn't. I know the rule it's, for uh, high school ball is once the ball is in the air, you're not yeah. allowed to touch the receiver, but as long as the ball is in the quarterback's hand, then the defensive back can touch the receiver and do what they need there. It's going to be 15 yards, which will move it to the 10. And it'll still be third down and up nope, first and goal or first and ten. No, now they go back to third down. The down box says third down, and now the referee is signaling third down. Double backs, and now the ball is looks like they're a little bit of dropped a dropped again yeah. on on that that exchange between the quarterback and the back in motion. When you get this close to the end zone, your plays have got to be executed perfectly. This is where, as an offense, you have to be as perfect as you can get because when you get close to the end zone, you got to make opportunities and score touchdowns. That will give a coach gray hair quicker than anything. Oh, absolutely. So they have it marked fourth and 12 as they Gonna, looks like they're going to go for it here, going for the touchdown. Light snaps it. She gives it to a receiver. She goes up the middle. Inside, 
Did she get in? No, no. she's flagged down at the two. The ball was carried by number 80 for the juniors. Number 80, we've called her name. Yeah, that's Sophie Shelby. We've called her name a few times tonight. She's got a, a lot of touches on those jet sweeps. Yeah. And tonight. the seniors will take over with 3.30 to go on their own seven. And right now they, they can just take it easy and run the clock out. They need one first down. Just tremendous job all around for the seniors tonight. Absolutely. As they go trips to the left. And they'll hike it. I believe Maddie Eckert has the ball. As Eckert's going to try to get free, but she's brought down around the 25-yard line. Yeah, they're going to flag her down at the 23. Clock continues to run. We'll be inside two minutes and 30 seconds. But it's another first down. <laughs> first down. I'd like to thank Athletic Director Chris Bell for all the work he did arranging tonight's game and the officiating crew who stayed over from a freshman game as the Lake Orion freshman defeated South Lion East tonight. And this crew stayed and they flagged Ecker, Ecker down at the 30. It'll be second down and three. Now they're calling her down at the 28. So it'll be second and five. Reminder, tomorrow night, seven o'clock, the Lake Orion Varsity Dragons take on the Farmington Falcons. Now Oswald hikes it as she gives it to Eckert. Eckert gonna get wide, yeah. but she's brought down. Literally. By, let's see if we can get the 83 for the juniors. Getting things back. Number 83 is Evelyn Taylor making the stop. Member of the girls varsity soccer team. And we are inside 30 seconds. Possible victory formation coming up here for the seniors. Uh, no, well, yeah, the, she, yeah, she just takes a knee. And that will do it. The senior class of 2024 with a very impressive victory over the junior class, 49 to 14. Our congratulations to both these squads for a well-played game tonight, a very entertaining game. Absolutely, both teams um, playing really hard all game long, credit to both teams, even though the seniors come out with a big win tonight as um, these girls end their senior football game tonight with a win, which is really special, I know, for them. Yep, and you'll have the same thing tomorrow night with a homecoming victory over Rochester. <laughs> I appreciate that. We're going we're gonna to do our best. That'll do it from up here in the booth. Again, it's homecoming week, the senior class defeats the junior class 49 to 14 for our producer director down in the truck, Joey Tysick. Joe Johnson on the sideline getting the good shots as always. And for Tyler Ratliff, good job. Thank you, I appreciate that, Doug. And 
For all of us in our ON TV crew, I'm Doug Corliss. Thank you for watching. Good night, everyone.